Welcome to an hour of code. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can create your own flag. I am on the Vocarium website and I will be clicking on details. After I click on details, I will then go to the assignment that says create your own flag. By clicking on the orange button, I will launch the actual area where I can change and edit code. If you will notice, on this lesson, I have multiple panels that allow me to manipulate the assignment. In the files area, I have three different files. The one that's very important to you is the one called Your Flag. I also have an area that's a console area. This area will display any error messages. If I click on Files, I will then go back to the area where I actually see the assignment instructions. In the assignment instructions, I tell you that the first thing you need to do is to build and run your flag so that you can see what you're actually creating. So let's do that. I'm going to click Build. And then click Run. After doing that, I then will go to my files area and you notice now I have quite a few other files that have been created because I've just built my program. And now instead of just having a file called yourflag.java, I have an actual area called myflag.jpg. So if I click on my flag JPG, I will actually see the flag that gets displayed. This was the actual code that the program was running. Let's explore that a little further. If I go back to Editor and I click on Files, I'm now at the area where I can manipulate the code again. If you notice in the instructions, and there are, is an updated version of the instructions posted on my blog, fantastictools.blogspot.com, but on here it tells you that there are a few things that you are looking at that actually make the flag display. One of them is the pane that has the set size, so let's locate that. So it says line 14. So I'm looking at these numbers right here. I'm going to go to line 14. This is the actual size of the flag, the width and the height of the flag. Then it tells me that line 21, so I'm going to look for line 21 in the gray numbers. Here's line 21. This is something that people who code in the professional world know to do, to look for the line of code. So in here it says that panel 1.7 background color is equal to blue. So that was the first panel that you saw on the left hand side of the flag and its color was blue. The middle color of that flag was white so that was the second panel that you saw in the flag that you looked at and the third one was yellow. So if you notice on here I also tell you that J panels are numbered for each panel created and they look like J panel panel 3 new panel. So let's take a look at that. J panel panel 3. So the number indicates which one of the actual panels that you are looking at. The other thing it tells you in line 26, go take a look at line 26, and it says that in line 26 there's a new grid layout. This provides how big of a grid is created for your flag. So this flag was 1 and 3 panels panels. So it's important to know that because in the lesson I'm going to ask you to change the grid layout. So instead of having just one and three panels next to it, meaning one big one and three panels next to it, we're going to maybe change it to a different kind of layout like two panels and then two panels inside of it. So the other area that I talk about is we need a pane for each one of the panels that we've created in code. So I tell you to look at line 27, line 28, and line 29, where panel 1 and panel 2 and panel 3 are actually added to the particular little flag. And lastly, I tell you that there is an area, the string output file, myflag.jpg, where you can actually rename your flag so that you can have multiple flags stored inside of the files area. So let's look at what it says here. It says, now let's get started. So it says, go to panel one, set background color blue. So let's do that. Let's go to set background color blue. And it says, change blue to any of these colors. So let's go ahead and set it to green. And then it says, now change the colors or panel two of panel two or three. So I'm going to go ahead and change the white one to maybe red. We'll make a Christmas colored flag here and then green 
And now it says that you should click on build. And then we will click on run. Now remember, where did I say you needed to actually go and check to see what your flag's output was? And that was files. So I go over to files tab, and then I look for the output flag, not your flag.java, because that's actually the code, but I'm looking for my flag.jpg, because that's an actual picture there. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And there it is, my green, red, green flag. Now, let's say you wanted to change the actual look of the flag because I wanted to get a little more sophisticated and possibly create the flag of one of the countries of your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Editor again and then click on Files to get back to the instructions. And let's take a look at the next set of instructions. The next set of instructions says, let's change the shape of your flag. So let's do that. To do that, I have to do a little bit more work. I'm going to create a 2x2 two two layout. And let's see what that does. And I'm going to go ahead and then I realize that I don't just have three colors that I need, but I actually need a fourth one now. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually use copy and paste to save myself a little bit of work. And I'm going to go right here, right below it, and paste my actual code. So I did a control C for copy and control V for paste. And this time I'm going to change the number three to a number four like this. And I'm going to go ahead and say that I'd like the next square to be red. The other thing I need to make sure that I have is an extra panel, because if I don't have an extra panel, the code won't display that extra set of J panel color that I wanted to have. So again, I'm going to copy this by going Control C for copy after I highlight it. Then I'm pressing right below it, and then I paste it. And I change the panel to a number four here. So let's see. We've got one, two, three, four. We've got panel one, two, three, four, and four different colors that I want to display. That layout, believe it or not, is two by two. So let's see what that actually looks like. I hit Build. I hit run, I click on files, I go down to the part where it says my flag.jpg, and there it is. Now why does it look like only two panels? Because it is actually four little squares, but the colors were the same. So let's go back again, and let's change the colors this time. And since I don't need the instructions this time, because I know what I'm doing a little bit better, I'm going to just go ahead and put blue here, and maybe the color yellow here. And now I'm going to build. And wait a couple minutes, and then run. Now I can go ahead and click on my flag JPG again. And there it is. Now you can see that there's actually four little squares. The other thing that you might want to make sure that you understand is that Vocarium has a really nice feature. It has a reset feature. Feature. So if you make a mistake, don't be scared to just reset your assignment back to its original state. It is perfectly okay to make mistakes when you're creating programs. It is something that we actually all know happens, and so making a mistake, fixing the mistake, is a very important thing when you're at creating. The last thing I'm going to show you is that you can actually generate multiple flags. If you scroll down into the instructions, my students have provided an area where you can look up country flags. So if you click on this, maybe opening in a different tab might help you so that you can still continue to work on your program. Wikipedia offers you designs of all different flags from all over the world. In this area, you'll see flags for the Ukraine and for Rome. You could easily build those flags. You could, of course, build your own one. Here's Romania's flag. That one wouldn't be too bad. The flag of France. Let's try to do Romania's flag. So that would be blue, yellow, and red. Let's go ahead and go back over to my workbench. Go to Editor. I already have four panels, so now I actually need to go back to my original one grid layout, three, and then we saw that the flag was blue, yellow, red, so I'm going to go ahead and go back there, so it's blue, yellow, red,
And then I actually need to get rid of that extra panel because that panel no longer is needed in my code. Otherwise, it would still display, but it would just not display correctly. And then the other thing is that I can actually go in here into the string area and call this Romania flag. And if you notice, there's all sorts of extra flags there. And I can pick a different one if I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and print out my new flag and maybe even put it on here so that it has an output message. And then I'm going to build and run. And go back to my files area and go take a look at for my Romania flag. So I'm going to click on Romania flag now and I should see the Romania flag. Let's see, did I do a good job? Looks like it. Blue, yellow, red. Hope you have fun doing your flag program during Hour of Code. If you come up with some creative new flags or if you'd like to show us your country flag, feel free to email us to my Fantastic Digital Tools Gmail account and we will post the best flags on our blog. Thank you for watching.